and it might do again in the lightning talks. It's just where to go after that. So if we do, if we have done and finish off moving everything, everything into .ui files that's from the dialogues, then you're left behind with very little in the translation framework that's really necessary. So uh, you end up with basically just strings left behind. And if all we're translating is just strings, then uh, like um, uh, Timmer has, uh, uh, has looked at before, we move everything over to get text. We are already using the get text PO format for where the translations from our system get converted to. And then they go into the translation system, and then they come back out of the translation system, and then get converted into our custom format. So we might as well just cut out the middleman there and use get text as our standard translation format. Use get text tools to extract translations, and then we need some way to provide those translations at runtime. And Boost comes with a suitably licensed, it claims to be uh, uh, multi threaded, uh, properly threaded, unlike the standard get text. Uh, so it's boosting the mutation of the icon V stuff to load translation. So that looks very promising. That uh, we could use a standard PO format, use somebody else's uh, library to load it up, which is suitably licensed, and then that would give us that would remove the blocks between us using Deckard, which is a website tool to show you what the dialogue you are translating looks like when you have translated it. So it would leave the theoretical uh, it would remove the blocks to translate. It would remove the blocks to implementing Deckard so that translators can see what they're translating in the website. There are some practical um, problems there involving uh, custom widgets, but we can work on them. Like custom widgets won't work in uh, Deckard Glade Runner. But uh, yeah, so that's where I'd, I'd like to uh, get there. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, if we have like, standard PO files and standard stuff, then things like, like like this in the screen would just work. So, if it worked. So that's like the next step after the major uh, conversion is to remove all of that. Um. Yeah, I think people say it's all not as good as we could do. Let's try. Yeah, that's the one. It's not having a good day. I think it's worth saying. Um, <laughs> well, I, I've, I've tried the demos before, and you get a, and you get you know, like the, the dialogues and the graphics of some theory. Awesome. And is there an incremental way we can move to that? Is this something that we can Yeah, so that's, I mean, I haven't looked into it fully yet, but I think we could do it in an incremental way. We could start with the uh, smallest SRC file and just convert over one module, the smallest module there as a, as a demo. Uh, we'd have to get all the stuff building, uh, so that's just a matter of just building it and all of that and move the smallest one over. There's a few practical things. I mean, uh, it's straightforward enough you know, what to do with basic strings. But we also have string lists inside of uh, LibreOffice. I don't know. I, I read the documentation on uh, GetText, and they do support string list concept, but it looks a little bit ugly, so it needs, needs to see how that looks in practice. Then there's image lists. Do we really need to have image lists? Probably not. And that probably simplifies a lot of things in LibreOffice as well. And then images, but images are just URLs to the image, so that's not an issue either. But the only thing about um, uh, URLs and images is that the moment we extract them from SRC files, so that we cut down the amount of stuff that's in the icon themes that we bring out, so we move those URLs directly from source code, then we'd have to have a way of extracting them, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So you, 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 you would lose our ability to shrink down our icon themes based on detecting what images are actually used by a simple scan. So that's just some edge cases there. Um, but I think it generally be easier to go around uh, those. I and mean, we've removed all of this translation term. Sorry? Yes, you, I would like to ask, because uh, uh, from my remember from the get text, it, was, it used to be that uh, it kept the image text inside binary. So I would like to ask uh, like, if this changed or if it's possible still to have uh, some ID that would be uh, in the binary and uh, you would have all in, in the English text outside of the binary, which would be important for mobile. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. that keeps the issue. Why would we need the English ones outside? Because like, the moment we ship all our languages together, so from the LibreOffice perspective, what's the downside of having English in the binaries? Uh, the, the size of the binary. Yeah. Because uh, like, uh, it, like at the moment, uh, the SRC allows us to just all the strings uh, outside of the binary, and when we have the Linux like 60 max for, for the I, mm. uh, iOS, uh, then uh, like every provider counts. 
so okay, or so it's just that's a concern. Yeah, that's so a concern. just I don't know like what's what's the what's no, the latest the uh, latest state on on get this if it is also like we can make it some way yeah, that yeah, we provide yeah. the provide the yeah. ID there and, and the and the the image text outside yeah. but uh, just there are see if it's uh, you're basically right as far as I know that even in the uh, Boost model, the English word stays in the library. So, yeah, we probably have to do something special. I'm confident that Lubosh can create a template that will uh, you know, compile the PO file. And, and, <laughs> and I just actually looked at this other thing. Always know that the translated resources, besides the translated resources, the double, because uh, translations are key in the, the English uh, uh, stream. So, every .mo file, machine object file, will contain English and uh, kind of contains the actual, the actual English stream. Yeah. Yes. And there's any way around that. But, uh, but for the fourth issue, it's, it's uh, kind of easy to drop it around with just um, um, mentioning an um, enumeration value with the code, and then um, uh, that could be brought to the English, English channel or something like that. Mm. Yeah, I kind of wanted to get away from it. Uh, most, of, most of the English things uh, for the dialogues are in and creating the two files. So we are talking about the strings and the messages. Yeah. And uh, what about the, the strings that are coming from the SCU? Yeah, that's the uh, SCU as well. I mean, for example, for the moment, um, GetText has all these back ends that uh, parse the Dutch Wi Fi and come up with a scheme there. So I wouldn't think it would be too hard to uh, add another one to get text, uh, another scheme for extracting from our, our XCU files. That's what I'd say you'd have to do. And there's also the, um, the as well as the XCU files, there's also the um, uh, various things like your desktop files would be covered. And then there's some windows, um, special translations for windows for the installer. Yeah. The ULF files, I think, is it? Yes. And they'd have to be covered as well. Oh, and there's, the they're sticking in the in its microphone, so do you have a mobile phone near the... No, I think it's no mic, it's off. Oh, it's you use a different mic, it's going to go away. Okay. It's constantly ticking. Okay. <laughs> As in, this, this one from now into this one. But uh, isn't there another one at the front? <coughs> yes, we can uh, pause and reassemble the equipment to see. I'm sorry about the ticking noise. I can hear it. It, it, was, it is still ticking, so... <laughs> Let's turn this one off. Okay. Uh, How, how do you use get text from 
from the Beatles and so on. Uh, how does that work actually at the moment? Do you have given, there's like, is it a, a certain bunch of Windows translations and yeah. Windows looks after us, is it? Yeah. So you don't need like a custom yeah. conversion yeah. there, yeah? Okay. Mm. So I, I don't see, see it possible. But yeah, you can still do it for everything. We're still going to need to put translation by the weird files, right? Oh, yeah, it's going to be weird edge cases. Yeah, there's quite a problem. Yeah, I'm sure there are a few edge cases, but I think we've covered the majority of stuff by moving over to it. Yeah, the Windows one is going to be a problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest problem. Yeah, it's going to be a 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 problem. Should we look at Blender? Do they come with Windows installers? Do they have a translation system that's hooked off Get Text as well? So, uh, one issue I don't know if you if if that is uh, a practical issue, but uh, if you if we now map an ID to text, um, you might have the same and and in, in, in Get Text have an English text that we map to something. If you have short English text like nice, which can mean a two, two million different things in another language, you might actually have two IDs, which yes. are different, but are the same in English. Get text has yeah, an idea. Yes. Okay. Not a problem. Okay, cool. Um, okay, well, so it's expiration time for that. Don't I want that? Other things we want to do, John? Not to do, but they are in strategic. Mm. No, not in the short term. I mean, you have uh, I got some stuff there around the uh, life cycle stuff, but maybe we can explain what exactly you have in mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure, sure. Um, so, um, I think the VCL life cycle concern that I have is that there are um, the most awful things in code to uh, try and avoid widgets getting destroyed while you're using them. So, there are various kind of listeners that you know you emit an event and you have, to have this thing, canary sitting on the stack that you check after it finishes. See if it's by now dead to the point of, and you can. This is very error prone and fragile. And it would be much better to have reference counting and uh, an explicit dispose to the delete on the VCL uh, widgets. So I think the first part there, I'm just talking to uh, Noel last night. Is Noel here? Noel Gray? There he is, there he is. Um, just uh, like the, the first step in that, anyway, regardless of what the solution you come up at the end, is that um, I don't think you should be able to create any of those windows on the stack. You have to be at least starting with you have to be able to do it them because if they're on the stack then there's absolutely no way to reference counting that's going to work. So Noel has a list. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not just on the stack, it's also members as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, once the, the stuff that's been converted over to WI has converted all of them into pointers to um, the ownership belongs to the actual VCL builder, so if you moved out of the dialogues, the uh, web more Right, so we Okay, so yeah, I think then that's that's really quite a significant change across a lot of things, but I, I, I hope it would help. Um, I can start up. And the hope is the hope is that some clan genius will help, ha, you know, help with this. Uh, it would mean moving a lot of the existing destructors into dispose methods, making sure that dispose methods can be run multiple times. Um, yeah, replacing every delete with dispose. It starts to look like a quite a big um, chunk, but I think, as you say, first finding the stack. Is a, is a prerequisite. And then there's the big, the, you know, uh, which, which, uh, I mean, is it controversial changing, having a decent life cycle on, on widgets, or is it not? Or what's, do people disagree or object? Or, you seem to get to it. <laughs> it's just, there's a lot of them. That's just an more worried about you know, that in there. And there's a lot of stuff that's been built in. Like, I'm just looking at here, so is it Impel, Ed, Dell is the thing to look out for. And Dell data, basically. It's all over the place that uh, we have these uh, checkers for yeah, yeah, yeah. Like something has died in the last. Uh, so we replace those with a reference. You know, yeah, I mean, like the reference just deal with the, the problem. Yeah, but there's just, there is a lot of them, a lot of stuff built into it, and a lot of stuff depends on it, so you know, we're just going to be a lot of uh, side effects in it. So it's not, not, like, it's not 
against it because it's a bad idea, but just because a lot of yeah. STH cases there. But either way, the first step of like a heat allocating the way I think is very, very straightforward and won't affect much. Cool. I mean, incidentally, if you have a crazy idea that you think we should be doing in, in LibreOffice, we're starting at the bottom here. You know, uh, so there's uh, often things, good things at the top, Miklosh. So one more thing that's quite low low on and it's generic is that in the, as far as I know the initial idea between the debugging to the normal build difference was that uh, allowing uh, debugging helping, having um, code which, which is not binary compatible and then how to debug it. But in practice probably quite some developer wasn't aware of the debugging testing. So if you are building uh, a module with a, a debug level 2, which is orthogonal or orthogonal to debug your tail, then sometimes, not sometimes, but regularly, you also get a binary incompatible build. And then you have, we have crashes, and after an hour, you, it turns out that just building from scratch makes the problem go away. So, the, um, so I guess it, it could be a good idea to, at least, in case you are aware of some code doing this, then, then um, changing uh, the conditional from, from OSR uh, debug level or something to debug detail in this case. Alright, computer is such an example. If you, if you build with debug level 2, then uh, during importing, you know, create debugging or some of our things slash TMP, and that helps development. On the other hand, we we constantly do this um, uh, cleaning or right, or building this debug level two, then going back to normal and that's it. And I'm sure it's not not just right. Uh, it's, so, so I, I know that uh, for the call um, call catcher, um, you also have to build the debug level two because because some some other modules also uh, have uh, debug uh, methods with the same conditional. Can you? Is that the wrong way? Is this the right way? So you want to go from here to no, the no, 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 no. Okay, perfect. And, and, and particularly great or dumb one. Okay. The, the great or dumb zero is, is something I know, uh, for example, taken care of by Beyond in Writer. So that's not fixed. Okay. Uh, but uh, but uh, this second developer. Do you remember? Well, in the end, uh, I mean, that's a virtual thing, but uh, I would love if we just had one, uh, not two orthogonal things there. So I would, in the end, um, would, would find a fine thing if we only had a debug level, for example, and could, one, someone wants to make that debug level 10, feel free to, to do that, but not having two different if depths, if gives us four different ways of doing something, yeah. which are yeah. yeah. having a single a single compile time debugging condition I would be also nice. But what I propose is just part of that. Sorry, that's, that's not what I said. 
the point of debugging is that it's incompatible, so you can't can just build one module with the debugging. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what's the um, what's the concrete thing there? I mean, we're agreed we're moving, we're doing this changes to make it work. Is a good thing. I can imagine that. Speaking just about right after filter, that's one hour I know. It would be possible to get the um, this debug level to sync to just debug it to and some runtime environment variable or boot up variable or something like this. So at least we would only have two bits and not a whole in and a bit. <laughs> but I'm sure this is not the only place in the code Cool. Uh, what do we still need to get level score? I mean higher than one. What is it what is it used for? Um, in a writer filter or, or in, in other places? Anywhere. I mean, why, why do we have still uh, OSL? Um, I guess, for example, uh, uh, but Jan Marek, please correct me. Uh, is it uh, true that also during mail merge, if you have debug level 2, then we are saving the ODT temporary files in, in, in some directory? Um, or something like this? So typically, if you, if you build with debug, you still don't want to get um, random temporary files created on your file system and so on. And these additional debug levels do that. But uh, it's not necessarily a uh, real time condition. So it could be a runtime. Should such, such stuff like be behind OSL debug or something like that? And so, like, if, uh, if uh, these uh, higher levels uh, would be switched to the, the DBG util, uh, would it still be necessary to have the OSL debug level, like the level part of that? So, no. so, so that would that would just transfer from uh, from like uh, OSL debug level. Uh, just if OSL one, 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 one and two to um, have debug and have debug util. Yeah. Right. The issue with that is it. If you use the OSL debug level, you can use that without having a debug usual build. So you can enable that quickly without rebuilding everything. And if you move that over to DBG utils, just to get these statements, you, you have to rebuild and debug build completely because it's incompatible between modules and otherwise. So this is why I still uh, like to use the DBG uh, debug level sometimes because it gives me debugging without having completely re recompiled mm -hmm. down to SDL. So, okay, so <clears throat> my feeling is it's an interesting area to clean up, and I think we we'll probably discuss debug levels all day yeah. uh, without getting into any more fundamental architectural uh, points of interest. And are we at the end of it already? Is that, was it half an hour slot? Or is it an hour slot? Hour slot. Oh, perfect. We can talk about debug levels for now. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's a fair point. Uh, I think it's probably not one of the, the larger structural um, things, but it's good to get down. Cool. Um, so things it's good to have things that students, I guess, or, or you know, easy hackers can you know storm through. I'm just slightly worried we have too few of those things at the moment.
So um, let's try and move on from that. <laughs> I think Michael had a really good talk on threading. Um, uh, at least from my perspective, you know, trying to move as much as we can, given the API surface we have, into rendering in a single GUI thread, in idle handlers or callbacks or whatever, makes some sense. Um, and it's not clear to me that there are many places where we do these stupid things. We just have this large theoretical exposure, right? Well, what, what's your take, Mike? Come, come and talk to us. Don't stand at the back there. What's the solution? We heard the problems earlier. You know, if, if there was something we could do, that would at least inch towards something better, what would it be? So um, do we think then the reworking gene unit is only to execute incoming requests at idle rather than in a thread is a prerequisite there? No, I don't think so. I think um, that um, the main work is not on, on the human interface. The main work will be um, on, the, on, the, on the core implementation. Other, other communication patterns um, to 
Uh, right, okay. So if I had a choice of rewriting every single UNO implementation to defer work to the main thread and simply deferring the UNO incoming call to the main thread, it seems to me like fixing the UNO would be some yeah, lines and fixing it. I don't think it. you you get far with this. Um, um, you, um, and then there's the callbacks. Um, I don't think, I'm sure it would be nice, but I don't think it works. Okay, I mean, but you know, if, if in every single UNO call that could trigger some kind of graphical update, we now have to defer, not take a certain new text and, and defer the work and push it to a main thread. That's basically proxying every single unit method to a, to a main thread, right? Because so currently the whole app is protected by the certain user. And if we have an infrastructure for doing that, it seems like it might be good to uh, reuse. No? Um, so I think the threading is one of those particularly intractable ones. Uh, but at least if we're agreed that finding existing uses of threads and killing them, or pushing them, you know, deferring that work in a different way.
Okay, cool. I hope there are other other issues here. Do other people have other issues? I have GL rendering, many priorities. So hopefully we're gonna make some progress on these links. A signal slot mechanism. To me the signal slot mechanism is really annoying. Um, is anyone using a boost signal anywhere? We need one brave person to use the first one, right? Or are we really not? I mean, does it depend on if, if you can use C plus plus eleven or not? Does it change anything? Stefan, C plus plus eleven. Do we have signals and slots and things like that or not? No, you start to use boost. Signals and C, yes. <laughs> Okay. That would mean if you have, uh, if you would like to have, uh, so the signals and slots you are already starting to over. Yes. And it may make a major difference if you can use it or not. Hmm. That's a question. I don't know. I, I know nothing about C++ 11. I defer entirely to Stefan. His answer was funny, but not in a way I could, uh, you know, um, <laughs> I could understand it. I'm not sure how, how your um, signal slot stuff would be related to that. Yeah, sure. So at the moment we have Deckle Link, which is possibly the worst um, in right. the world, right? Um, it's awful. It's ugly. My question was about... What's so, 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 Can you say that again, Stefan? <laughs> so, um, what's ugly with Deckle Link? It's not type safe. It's hard to read. It's not standard, so you have to train people in what the code means. Um, but so maybe, it's not a, but could could we maybe make this ugly <coughs> technically the wrapper <coughs> signal? So you would still have technically everywhere, but you would actually use a boost signal as an uh, as the implementation, and then it could slowly kill off all the the macro uses with an easy hack that will run for 40 years, but... What do you think like that? Um, so there's two boost signal things in the signal and signal two. And one of them has a migraine. The right? normal signal is deprecated. Okay. And boost two requires the library or not? Signal two? Okay. My question was more about if this would be a mass conversion and we are creating uh, callback functions with one or two lines and then um, one month later we allow C++ 11 which introduced lambdas so then the second mass conversion would remove all these one or two line norm methods then maybe it's good to wait for um, the point when we allow C++ 11 and do of the conversion only then but it was a question. So, does C plus plus eleven lambdas replace Deckle Link anyway? Sure. I mean, what, what is the functionality there? I'm thinking of uh, use cases when uh, there is a checkbox and the com callback only maps the click into a boolean number or something. Sure, sure. So, so obviously having the K in line is nice, but what, what level of, how well does it map onto our decal link, gimbal link, or all these uh, necks? I don't know. I'm not the one who brought up numbers and combination. Okay, I, I just rely on you as an expert on C++, so I don't know. Does anyone else know? Um, uh, Mike, I think uh, that uh, it kind of depends on the library. Okay. It's, it's not really a feature of C++ 11, but it's a feature of the library if it supports some dust in some way. The C++ 11 feature itself is just about currently if you would like to have a function coma, then you create a class with a single operator, like it's a coma, and then you write your single or, or few lines that go down. Mm -hmm. And with C++ 11 you can have that with, a, with an anonymous class and, and all that in line. Okay. And so I just mentioned the whole thing to avoid doing some, some mass conversion that are fast. So my stuff, my, my stuff is simpler for, for very trivial holdings. The thing about uh, Lambdas is that it has capture, it, 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 capturing variables, so 
See, there's, there's basically no clear answer. That uh, this signal is a lot better. Probably not the other parts really know is who's seen as doing enough to ask one question. All right, then. So I use boost signals, and they work. These will do well. They have all the joys of templates. As much as as soon as you compile anything that includes anything used as a template, it gets a lot slower to compile. And there's a lot of links out there. Um, beyond that. So anyway, no one is violently opposed to someone coming and doing a crazy cleanup using this signal. Yes. What else? Take the gel rendering. Um. Okay, so the thesis is that uh, our current rendering API is SARC, and uh, that OpenGL sucks in a more standard way. And uh, the, you know, uh, having APIs so that people know about and so on is a good idea. And yet still wrapping OpenGL to a degree so that it's easy to use maybe in some ways would be a good idea. And go, okay, I think. Does that summarize it, Marcus? Uh, yeah, it's just having that as another easier um, item that's based on top of GL and then get rid of some of the problems uh, that we have. Uh, one example that's brought up is uh, Raven, because we are still using these calls in this year. Um, another one is mobile platforms, where we could have a lot of because it uh, transfers some load from the CPU to the GPU, uh, and we might be able to support uh, some um, more complex stuff easier in this year, something like uh, gradients uh, are more or less free. At least I hope none of that is controversial, assuming there are people to do the work, right? Anyway, no one is going to shout about it. Um, <clears throat> probably the more controversial thing is when we start saying, hey, wouldn't it be nice to have all these easier, cheap gradient stuff and throw away the non-GL backend stuff? So, you know, we currently have a huge amount of duplicated, extremely legacy code, dealing with all sorts of evil in the Linux backend, at least. And it would be great to share that GL code across Windows, Linux, and Mac. IOS and Android. What do you think? Yes, so my position here is um, that the Windows and Mac are not all problems there. Um, so surprisingly, uh, on Windows we get the best of the chat support. Uh, on Mac we have to be secure from um, in all supported um, all six versions. On mobile platforms, it's worse, but it's the manageable. And then comes dinners, and we are back to uh, some really old or shared versions. So, uh, that's the question. Uh, 
Feasibly, it's going to be six. <laughs> so feasibly, it's going to be six months before anything happens here, right? Before we, we ship anything, would you be even capable of it? Yeah. And so we, it's a sort of new process. Yeah, for, for, for teaming, we, we, we use the uh, GTK APIs to render out to PIX maps and then stick the PIX map, draw it ourselves over our existing VCL. Uh, with the GTK3, uh, I'm kind of hoping that I can, in the long run, get GTK3 to natively open up our dialogues and just render them itself and turn our existing widgets into wrappers around the native GTK3 ones. That's kind of where I was going with that. But, uh, I mean, when it comes to like you know what what do we do with GTK three or KD four? I mean rather than just using X calls, we could you know revisit our existing GTK three integration and continue to try and fix that up to just use the actual GTK three or uh, rendering stuff and uh, not use any direct X calls. I mean that was pretty much done, but I haven't looked at it to see that 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 bit rotten horribly recently. I mean it still builds, but yeah, so that's something that. I can read out and probably look at reusing the GK3 side of things anyway to see what kind of work we can do there to uh, be ready for Wayland as close as we can. But I need to look at it to be able to give a useful answer. Cool, 
So uh, we've rambled along. Uh, we've not got anywhere above VCL, really. Um, but uh, yeah, any other major brokenness things that are obvious that you can do is refactoring, escape cleanups, up, higher up in the stack. Any big churnable tasks? We're pretty much at the end now. Some other things like uh, unwinding the bitmap stuff, hopefully when we do the GL backend, we'll, we'll solve that. Um, we'll try and get uh, alpha into bitmaps. Um, we'll split out. Yeah, various just cleanups, I guess. Um, otherwise, design-wise, I hope we're going in a positive direction still. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, thank you for showing up. That was the off. I'm very appreciative. Good day.